We are going to begin our time of singing to the Lord and to each other this morning by reading a few verses from Psalm 48, verses 1 through 3, following up on uh, Paul's message last night. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, his holy mountain, beautiful in elevation, is the joy of all the earth. Mount Zion in the far north, the city of the great king. Within her citadels, God has made himself known as a fortress. We were reminded last night of how beautiful the church of Jesus Christ is. And here we have a similar sentiment. His holy mountain, beautiful in elevation, the joy of all the earth, Mount Zion. It's the place where God dwells. In the New Testament, we're told that The church has become the temple of the living God. God dwells in the church, so it's precious. It's the people that Jesus came to win, to redeem as his bride, as his body, to build up as his church. So we love the church. But we love the church because Jesus dwells in the church by his spirit. And Jesus is the cornerstone of the church. So we are gladly going to lift up our hearts and our voices as we sing of the church's one foundation, Jesus Christ, her Lord. Yeah. 
now by faith will be sight and we will see the bride perfected in all her beauty and we get a picture of that in Revelation 19 verse 6 this is the Apostle John writing then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude like the roar of of many waters and like the sound of mighty peals of thunder crying out hallelujah for the Lord our God the Almighty reigns let us rejoice and exalt and give him the glory for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready it was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure. For the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. It's not something we earned. It's not something we deserve. It's something we were granted. And the angel said to me, write this. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are the true words of God. I wonder if we ever feel as though when we invite people to receive Jesus, to believe in him, to repent of their sins, put their faith in the finished work of Christ, we're somehow trying to persuade them, no, really, this is good. This is really better than what you have right now. The whole Bible makes it pretty clear, but this passage in particular makes it pretty clear that what we're going to experience at the marriage supper of the Lamb is like, it's, we just can't even imagine what it's going to be like. 
Think of the happiest moments in your life. That when, you're, when your heart could just explode for all the joy that's inside. Marriage supper of the Lamb, it's going to be better. And knowing that, doesn't it make you want to see as many people there as possible? Years ago, Isaac Watts wrote these words we're about to sing, how sweet and awful is the place, A-W-E, awful, with Christ within the doors, while everlasting love displays the choicest of her stores. Let's talk about that time when we are, we are going to sit at the marriage supper of the Lamb. By faith, we are in Christ now in the heavenlies, and we're thinking, Lord, why am I here? And why aren't there a lot more people here? And that's what he uses the church to do, to spread the good news that we can have peace with God and join in the marriage supper of the Lamb.
How we long for that day when all the church will be gathered in and all the sin and all the tears and all the pain and all the sickness and all the confusion and all the terror will be gone forever and we will feast in your presence for endless ages. Father, we ask that you would fill our hearts with a burning passion to see that day come, to anticipate that day, to long for that day, and to be used by you to see as many, as many as we can join in the feast all through the finished work the substitutionary sacrifice, the glorious resurrection of our perfect Savior, Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. I was reminded of this passage from Isaiah uh, 40, starting in verse 25, when God says, To whom then will you compare me? 
that I should be like him, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their hosts by number, calling them all by name, by the greatness of his might, and because he is strong in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? We tend to think God is so great that he can't possibly know what's going on in each of our lives. And what God shows us in Job, and what we see here in Isaiah, the exact opposite true is true. God knows it is so great, he knows exactly what's going on in each of our lives and our hearts. So let's lift our hearts and our voices to give him the glory that he alone deserves. Eternal God, unchanging, mysterious and unknown. Your boundless love, unfailing in grace and mercy shown. Bright seraphim in ceaseless fight for
Yes, amen. And brothers, I want you to know, you know, sometimes you end a song and there's this kind of overflow in your heart and some of us have just been taught you can't do anything right then. It's okay here. Just giving you permission. Um, the reason we can approach this great God is because we have a great high priest. And Hebrews 4 Verse 14 through 16 says, Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. There are times when we're more aware that it's a time of need but if we see things biblically, it's always a time of need. And the good news is, we always have a great high priest who sympathizes with our weaknesses and will ensure through his perfect life, substitutionary death, and victorious resurrection that we will reach the end for which we were predestined, and that is seeing his face. O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Oh
And Father, we thank you that we can say those words and know they are true because of what you have done in your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our hope, who is our life, who is our mediator, who is our song, who is our hope, who is our joy, both now and forever. And we entrust the things we don't know to you because we know that you are good. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take our seats.